Hello, I'm Aaron Sorensen. Um, awesome to meet all you fellow artists. It's always an honor to come up and like present, so thank you, Maxon, for having me. I love doing this. I love teaching. I love showing little cool tips and tricks, and uh, I'm going to do that today. But first, a little bit about me. So I'm a VFX artist. I'm also a, uh, recently a partner at a company called Zebra Creative. We're a small agency. We do design, web, UX, marketing, and I'm head of 3D and motion. So if you guys are wanting more work and want to work together, talk to me after. I'd love to get your contact, work with all of you. There's so many talented artists, and I always love connecting. So yeah, come talk to me after. And then um, probably a lot of you know me from VFX Central. That's my YouTube channel. I teach tutorials, you know, Redshift, lighting, compositing, just a bunch of cool stuff. And my favorite things to do are like cinematic stuff. So I'm always trying to like go for that cinematic look. You know, it's like, I think a lot of us get into this because we're like, I want to make movies. I want to make the stuff I see in the movie theater. So that's kind of like my style and what I like to do. And also hello everyone that's on the live. How you guys doing? Okay. So with that, um, I just want to show, this is our Zebra Creative Reel. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, you can see we've worked, you know, we've been lucky to work with Disney and uh, Sony and a bunch of other cool IP and uh, just, yeah, just having lots of fun. Um, today, um, hopefully, I don't curse you all, but you might be cursed after this because you're going to start watching films and animation and look at it differently. And you're going to like turn to your partner or friend and be like, did you know that they have a light like behind them there and there? And it's actually... Yeah, so you might be cursed, so when you watch movies from now on, you'll probably think me and be like, thanks, Aaron, you ruined movies for me. Because we're going to talk a lot about lighting. We're going to go through the importance of lighting, how to tell a story, and some tips and techniques in uh, Cinema 40 and Redshift, and how we can really make our stuff shine. Because at the end of the day, we want to, like, you can take something basic and make it fantastic with lighting. So... My background, a lot of it, is using practical lights. So I'm, my father-in-law is a gaffer. I've been a DP, I've directed, I've shot. And so I've done, I've kind of worked on both sides of, of the camera and I've learned a lot about lighting. And I think that that is something that can give you an edge. So if you want to learn a lot about lighting, I would suggest going out, take your iPhone or whatever and practice lighting and learn how light works. Learn, you know, if. The, the size of um, like a big area light will make things softer, or you go outside and you learn how to bounce light or diffuse light. Those principles can all be applied within CG. But in CG, we have a massive advantage. For example, we can put a light up in a scene and we can turn it off and hide it. We can isolate a light to one object using light linking. So we can say, hey, this object only be affected by this light. So we have lots of advantages in the CG world. But I want all of you to write this uh, website down and I'm gonna give Chris Bjorn, this guy has created this incredible website. Um, I, when I found out about this, 
website, it completely changed the game. So it's CG cinematography. So what he does is he has these awesome categories where he's broken down all of these concepts of light, color management, and he's a professional lighting artist. He's worked on many different uh, feature films, fully animated stuff, and he was super cool in breaking this, these down and showing us a little bit of how they do it in the industry. And this is where I've learned, not just from the practical stuff, but when I went through his, all of these, there's tons of information. I was like, my mind opened up and I was like, oh my gosh, I get it. So you'll, we're going to talk a lot about some things from his blog and I'll show you some really cool stuff and some cool techniques. But so um, within his blog, he kind of talks about this book called Masters of Light in Depth. And I want to just touch on the importance of lighting and why we light. So number one, directing the viewer's eye. You, you want to make sure that you're, whatever you want your audience to see, you want to light. So it's like you're, you're really pulling their eyes in towards the thing. So if you're doing products, a lot of us here will do products and other things. You want to light in a way so that the viewer's attention is on that thing. Enhancing the mood. So if there's mood or atmosphere, you can enhance it with color or where you position the lights. Creating depth. So this is like creating separation. So if you have like a really busy background, you want to learn how to create depth so that again, the focus is on the subject. Conveying the time of day or season. So this is just kind of establishing where are we? And this is just another thing that you want to do to help with the story. Revealing character's personality or situation. So yeah, if you're doing more character driven or narrative, this is again, you can light things in a certain way, like having things underlit you know, it can make someone look more menacing. Um, you could have someone more front lit. If they're side lit, they're split, they may feel emotionally split or they're conflicted. So there's so many cool ways of telling a story with just lighting. And then um, complementing the composition. So you have your shot composed a certain way and lighting in a way can really just enhance the way you're composing a shot. So in center framed, off to the side, you'd maybe darken one side. Just all these little things you can do in lighting to really enhance um, your storytelling and directing the viewer's eyes. So now I want to talk about types of lights. So what types of lights are we using? So there's natural lights using skylights, you know, the sky, the sun, and the moon. Those are going to be like your very natural lights. Practical lights. So we have TVs, we have street lights, lamps, and effects. So for the applicable to us artists, like CG artists. If you have like an object that has like an emission that's glowing, I would consider that like a practical light or you have like an explosion that you put in, that's gonna be considered a, a practical as well. And then we have our dramatic lights or studio lights. So this is like our area lights, anything that's, that's um, not really found in like the real world that we, you would wanna set up, like if you were in the practical world, giant softbox, spotlights, IES lights, all those things. And now we're going to um, jump into cinema and we're going to start looking at each of these things and how we can use them and kind of like how to use their sliders. So we have the sun, we have our sky rigs, our HDRIs, aerial lights, spot, uh, omni, and IES. So let's jump in here. So you can see right here I have a bunch of our lights. So we're first going to look at our aerial lights. So we're using uh, Redshift and I just want to kind of show you guys how this works. And I'm sorry he's not clothed. It's disgusting. But uh, there he is. So with lighting with the area light, there's a couple of techniques and principles you want to keep in mind. So the larger the light, obviously, obviously it's going to get brighter. But the other thing that it's going to do is it's going to make your shadows softer. You'll see that the fall off on his face is going to be much smoother. And if we decrease the size of this, you'll start seeing that the shadows will start becoming more contrasty. So if you want to create a harder shadow on their face, more contrast, more moody, you would want to just make the size of the light a little bit smaller. Another thing you can do is within the area light parameters, so you have your intensity, obviously, exposure, but we also have the spread. And this is something that I don't think I mean, maybe, I don't know, but a lot of people use, but spread will direct the focus. It'll almost turn into a spotlight. And let me just turn it full blast so you'll see it's very soft. And as I direct it in, you'll see it's getting sharper and our shadows are even getting harder as well. 
So that's another way you can soften things up or direct your light. If you have a specific area you wanna, you wanna light, and then you can maybe change the shape of it, your light, and make sure my hands are in the right position. Let me zoom out so you guys can see this. So yeah, you can see we could direct lights where we want, very sharp, very harsh, just by changing the spread right down here. The other nice thing is, is by default, the visibility is off, but there's sometimes, sometimes where you, or sometimes you wanna use the light as maybe an object in your scene and you can turn that on and off. So that's really nice. You also have the shapes. So if you come in here, you can change it to a disc. You can change it to a sphere. And I've used that one before and you can see now it's intersecting with its body. Because there's sometimes you'll wanna use a giant spherical light in a scene. Um, I know in the movie um, Inception, when they're in, there's the, the one, of the, one of the shots they have, they have this very warm above light and they use what's like a china ball. So it's a gigantic sphere light and then they would take the temperature and they would do it at like 32 Kelvin. So if you start learning about temperatures right here, the 6500, that's daylight, so that's gonna be cooler. And as we move this down into like the 32, I think it's uh, right there, that's gonna be closer to like your warm lights in your house, something that's a little bit warmer. And usually warm light will create more of an inviting feeling. So again, creating that emotion with, within that. We're gonna stick right there for now. Um, you also have cylinders. So that's another fun shape you can use. And then there's meshes. So you can actually put a mesh in there and it will illuminate as light. So for now, we're just gonna keep with the good old rectangle light and we'll spread that out. So that's one light. Now let's talk about uh, point lights. So a point light is just as, that's as simple as it is. It's just a simple point light. They're nice if you wanna use it to enhance maybe a practical uh, maybe you have like a lamp next to a wall or if you wanted to create some separation between um, or a silhouette of your character or you have a product and you wanted to highlight the, the shape of it, the silhouette, of, the silhouette of a product or a person, really simple way. You have this background card, like a wall, and then you create a nice sphere, uh, Omni light, you put it behind them and voila, now you have a little bit of separation. And if you didn't, and you can, I'll show you this, if you move the light away, you'll see that our character starts disappearing and it's hard to see. Whereas if we have a light behind him, now we have that nice separation between him and the background. So that's point light, pretty simple. Um, I have also used point lights to create highlights or specks in the eye. Like if you want some characters that need a little speck in the eye, throw a little point light right there. And then we have our spotlights. Spotlights are used in many different ways and practically. You can use them for a fake sun. You'll see all the time they'll, in big movies, they'll have a window and they need the light to stay consistent throughout the whole day because the sun will move. So they will block out the sun, they'll throw a spotlight right there, shoot it through the window. So spotlights can be used as fake sun and they're really, really nice ways to separate our uh, uh, foreground from the background. So you can see right here, I just threw a spotlight up in the air and there you go. And with the spotlight, you also have the same type of features where of the spread. But here we have a cone angle, so that'll spread it out nicely. If maybe you're doing something that looks, you're wanting it to look like a stage or a presentation, and you have the fall off. So this is gonna be like the softness of that as a, a, of the, um, the spotlight. It'll just fall off nice, or you can have it be really harsh. You can see our shadows on the ground, and we can just fall it off nicely. And with all of these, you have the color temperature, you also have texture, and we'll get to that a little bit le later using what's called gobos or textures that you can project in there. Also wanted to mention, in all of these, you can use a include or exclude for objects. Um, for example, let's say we have this cube, and we're like, you know, I like the light hitting um, our guy, but I don't like that spotlight hitting our box. Within the project, and right here, you can just take that cube and say, hey, I want this light to exclude that. And there you go. Now the light is not affecting our cube in the scene. And 
there are times where I use this, like if I'm wanting to light just my subject, but like I have an uh, area light right behind him and I don't want it to hit the floor. It just is like too many reflections or whatever. I'll just use this right here and bam, it's just nice way to kind of control your light. So, so we also have IES lights. Do you guys know what IES, IES lights are everyone? Okay, cool. Yeah, IES lights are really nice. And if you're looking for some, you can either go find them online or in here, I believe, let's see if it's connected. Uh, IES. Oh, there we go. So they have a whole library in the asset library of IES lights. So instead of going and searching online for all these tools, it's good to just like first check the asset browser because um, they have a ton of stuff in here. It's free, it's built in, and you can just drag it in and drop it in. So with an IES light, you'll see. These are really nice because it looks, it gives the feeling of like, light passing through a lens. So when you have like lamps in the ceiling or something like, you know, any light passing through like glass. And the closer you have it to the wall, you'll see it gets a little bit sharper. And as you get further away, it'll get softer. And you can rotate these. So you can see if I do this, you can rotate them any direction you want. So that's pretty cool. And again, same thing, you can exclude stuff, um, softness of the shadows, all the stuff. Now, these parameters down here, the contrib contribution, we'll get to a little bit later, especially with the volumetrics, but this is really cool because you can have lights contribute to different things. And maybe we'll demonstrate that with the area light. So I'm gonna turn these lights all on just for now so you can kind of see it, the whole scene together. And we'll zoom out. There's our guy, there's our scene. Um, spotlight's looking kind of gross, so we're gonna feather that thing a little bit more. All right. So like I said, you can have your lights contribute to different things. And with the area light, let's just do an example. Let me try to slide this over so you guys can see it's a little bit better. So this area light, we can have it contribute to different things. So let's say we're like, you know, I like the reflection in his eye from the area light, but I don't like the way it's hitting the diffuse. You can simply slide this thing down and there you go. So now you're able to use the area light for just the reflections and not the diffuse. And you can come in here and do this for all of these things. So now you can see the reflection in his eyes if I slide this up and down. So if, you, if you're getting a weird reflection maybe and you're like, where is this coming from? And I don't like that that one's affecting that. You can simply scroll it down or turn it off and there you go. I'm sorry, Earl, maybe I'll zoom in and see if I can zoom in a little bit closer and you guys can see this. Let's get in. Okay, so it's off and then we just turn this up and there you go, he got his eye lights back. So that's just a really cool way to have more control. And again, all of this is you guys have the control in your hands and you kind of get to decide how you're gonna use it. You can use it for transmission, single scattering. This is things like, um, like uh, you'll see in the materials are single scattering or multi-scattering like uh, using skin or anything like that. And global illumination can contribute to that. Or you can, so it's not doing like another bounce or volumetrics. So I use it for volumetrics all the time. Cause sometimes you'll find when you create like a volumetric scene. So let's just do that really quick. I'll just turn on some volumetrics and we can look at it. Uh, let's turn this on. All right, so you can see it's, it's it just way too much. Like everything in my scene right now is contributing to the volumetrics. And if we don't want that, let, we can come into each of the lights and we can start turning some of this off. So let's say we don't want the point light to contribute. Uh, we don't want the area, we just want like the backlight. And there you go. So now just our spotlight is contributing. And the other cool thing is you can just tone it down. So you're, if you want it to contribute some, you can do that as well. So there you go. So this puts more control in your guys' hands, which is pretty rad. All right, so now let's talk about, ooh, ooh, ooh almost spilled water. Okay, let's talk about the next thing. I think we're gonna go into the sun and the sky. So let me just pause this. And we're going to turn this off. And we're going to turn off our environment. And if you're looking for all these lights are, <clears throat> you can come right here. And this is where you're going to find your sun, your sky, and the RS environment is where those volumetrics are. So if you're looking to do volumetrics, there you go. And right here is like your point lights, spot, infinite light, area, dome, IES, and all the other fun stuff. And we're not going to get into portal lights, but I can touch on it a little bit later. All right, so let's talk about these natural lights. So within the natural lights, we're first gonna start with 
a dome light. <clears throat> it is basically a gigantic, it's like we're in a gigantic sphere. And this dome light, if you're looking for HDRIs, again, you can come in here into your asset browser and search. And there's a wonderful library of great HDRs that you can use. So one thing with HDRs, and like this one in particular, or actually I can keep that on, is I wanted to, I use this specific one to show you an example of what do you do when you want to create contrast? You have something that's really flat and that can be a problem. You don't want it to look super boring and flat. So how do we create contrast with something that's really flat? That is the question. And I wanted to talk a little bit about flagging or blocking light. So we all know how light works. When you have um, light just will hit an object and bounce. And if you have like a color and light hits it, it'll reflect that color onto someone. Well, if you have like a white card, when the light hits, it'll bounce and reflect that light. So you can use it to fill light. You can also use it to absorb light. So if you have like a black plane, you can start blocking out light. And I wanted to take one of these. Maybe we'll just do this really quick. Yeah, I'll shake one of these planes. Okay. So you can take, so you see these black uh, planes in here. You can actually use these to block out or absorb some light. So again, this technique is used all the time on like film sets. If they're shooting in a very flat environment or it's overcast, is what they'll do is they'll take a giant black plane and they'll move it close to the subject's face. And so now I'm going to toggle this on and off and you'll see what it's doing. So we have a really flat environment, a really flat lighting, overcast or whatever, but they want to have some nice contrast on their face. Simply create a plane, make it black, and bam, there you go. And of course, because we live in CG land, we have the advantage. We can come in here, render tags, object, and we can say, hey, I don't even want to see the visibility of it. And you'll see in our viewport, yes, we see it, but in the render, it does, it's completely gone. So we can hide things. We have this extra advantage of being able to hide stuff, where in the film world, it's not really possible. So that's one way of creating contrast using an HDRI. So if you have an HDRI, <laughs> I'm losing my voice. <laughs> if you have an HDRI with a sunlight, that can be pretty cool because that will give you some direct light. So let's drag one in. Let's find something that's a little bit brighter. Uh, let's see if we can drag this one in here. Let it update. So sometimes this is almost all you need is a, just a nice looking HDRI. So let me turn this plane off. You can see the background. So yeah, you're getting those harsh shadows from the sun in the HDRI. This has no other lights in it. It's just the HDRI, and it's a great way to light. You're getting beautiful ambient light from the environment, some nice reflections, and it looks pretty good out, out of the box. So that's HDRIs. Again, the same type of things we talked about before. It can contribute to whatever you want. It also can be excluded, however you want to use it. And now let's talk a little bit about the sun. So here we have sun. And within the sun, we can come in here and there's some cool parameters. Um, turbidity is basically like how, um, how many particles are in the sky. And you'll see it starts kind of diffusing stuff as I turn this up and down. So it's going to start making everything look a little bit more diffused as you play with that. Let me turn this uh, little light blocker off. So that will make it a little more diffused. Intensity, we all know that. You have this horizon, which you can uh, set it lower or higher, it's, and you can blur it. So let me set this back to zero, and we can just blur it out if you want to feather it out nicely like so. And then the other cool thing in the sun parameters, so this is what I was talking about when I said you can make, you can change this scale of the sun. So sun is teeny, so the shadows are gonna be very harsh, but we can increase the scale of the sun, and as I increase it, you'll see the shadows will become softer and softer. So that's just another quick way if you want something a little bit softer. Um, 
you can do it that way. And the sun will get softer in real life when it's passing through a lot of particles in the sky. That's like when the sun starts going down, hitting the horizon. It's passing through all this atmosphere, all these particles, and it's going to make it softer and softer and softer. Um, so that's why people really like, the reason why people love sunsets and sunrise is the sun is getting softer and it's getting warm. It's getting more and more warm and the sky is getting more cold. So you're getting two complementary colors at golden hour and you're getting this nice blue and this nice warm. And so it's this beautiful marriage of two complementary colors. So golden hour is always great. That's why people shoot at that time all the time. So if we wanted to create some contrast and maybe wanted to direct our viewer's eye a little bit more, I want to show you a couple of things you can do. And one is simply, like I was talking about before, is just blocking light out. So I'm going to pull these planes back in. But just by doing simple stuff by creating planes and moving them around and positioning them, you can help direct your viewer's eye. And I would suggest first setting up your camera. So let me also turn the sharpness of the sun, the scale of the sun down. So it's small and harsh again. So just by first setting up your composition and then figuring out what do we want them to look at, you block out, you can simply block out some, some light. Grab some cards, flag them off in different ways, and it really pulls their eye into what they're supposed to be looking at. It's directing your audience's eye just by adding cards. Another thing you can do, so I can turn these planes off, is we can create fake clouds. So I have this plane overhead, and all we're doing in this material is we are simply making it black, and then we're going into the, uh, let me double click this. One second, open the node, node editor. So you can see we have a max on noise. We're plugging that into the opacity and it's creating like shafts of light. And it's, it's giving the illusion of clouds. And the cool part is we get to direct that. So we get to kind of position the clouds where we want. So if you had a gigantic landscape, you could really position clouds where you'd want and direct the viewer's eye if there's like maybe a castle on the hill or something or a specific building that our hero's going to, you could use some clouds to direct the viewer's eye. And then when you turn the uh, volumetrics on, you'll, you can get some beams of light through those as well, which is kind of cool. I don't know if it's gonna be a little too bright, but. Yeah, we're not going to do that right now. But yeah, you can use it for cool, um, like, god rays coming down through the clouds just by blocking the light and using the volumetrics. So that's a lot of the natural light. If you do moonlight, you can just do, like, an HDRI and then a big soft overhead, but we didn't get that set up in here. Okay, so let's talk about practical lights. Turn this one off. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. All right, so this is a TV. And we can see that this TV is, this is just a material on this flat screen TV, and it's putting off light, but it's not really helping us. It's not really doing any, like it's not lighting our character. It's just illuminating a little bit. So when you use practicals on film sets, they'll have like a lamp or something in the background, and then they'll move an area light next to the, the, the subject, and they'll change the temperature of the light to match maybe the lamp to give the illusion that it's lighting them. And let me show you that right here. So here's this area light. So the area light is just enhancing what's in the room. So we're not having to like crank up the emission amount of the TV, and there's no way that it, he, he would be able to be lit from that TV like that. But you can fake it, and that's all we're doing. You'll find a lot of this is just faking it, and your eye will fill in the gaps. It's funny how you see the TV behind him, but for some reason, you're okay with him being lit from the side by the TV. Your brain just kind of goes, oh yeah, I see the TV. So you have like a point of reference, and then you see him being lit, you're like, okay, sure. <laughs> I'll accept it. And you'll find that happens all the time. And you can enhance things like if you have an explosion, you wanted to light some certain subjects or you wanted like a certain highlight hitting something, you just are enhancing what's already there. And I would suggest even doing that if we're doing, you know, particles or whatever, 
and you want to enhance it using that way, it's like you can create colorful lights and just enhance all of your practical effects. Um, so think, and if you're always looking for, again, practicals, I always come in here and just again, if we wanted a lamp, you can just drag a lamp in, it'll download. Use the place tool. There you go. So we have a lamp back there. This is using the other light, but so if you have like a really bright lamp in the background, let me turn off the TV. Um, it's not getting bright enough. Yeah, you could take another light. We're just going to copy the this area light. Come on now. Let me close this. So we have this other area light. And we could just take this light and we can say we want it to be maybe more of a warm color. And if you see those harsh shadows on the floor, we can do what we talked about earlier and say, you know what? I don't want that to hit the floor, but I want it to hit our subject. So this is a great instance where you'd use that. And then you'd want to come in here and you'd want to maybe say, let's add, let's enhance the lamp's light on the wall. Like you want it to be a little bit brighter. So you could simply just take like a point light, drag it in here. Let's go into the parameters and we could go into temperature. We'll do a temperature this time. Oh, one more zero. Great. We take this light over here by the back of the lamp, move it up. So now we're giving the illusion, if that's all we're doing. Like you don't need to be like crank up your settings in like an emission. You can just give the illusion and our brain is going to fill in the gaps and it's okay that there's suddenly a soft light on the side of their face. And I'll show you real life examples in some films of how that works. So that's with the practical. Let's go back to, okay, so now we talked about blocking light or flagging lights, spreading or focusing. Now we're going to talk a little bit about gobos. Does everyone know what gobos are? Gobos? Okay. Yeah. Adding just a light texture onto a light. Um, so let's turn off this and go back to our studio. So the cool thing with gobos is you can really create some cool moods with it. And you just come into here and you add a, oh, where is it? Oh, you gotta go to color. So again, asset browser, and you could do something like stripes. So we have these stripes, and you just drag it into the texture. Now, you're like, that didn't work. Why am I not seeing it? Well, the spread is too soft. So the texture is on there. So you have to come into this parameter and slowly turn it down, and there you go. Now you're going to start getting those stripes. Maybe this is like a noir, like a film, black and white. And you can see these really cool stripes on his face. And it's just a really cool way to create a, a, a mood or an attitude or just, I don't know, a feeling. And then maybe there's those outside like halogen light or I don't know, some cool lights. There we go. Moonlight shining in. And then you can change the scale of it by doing this. Scaling it like that. So, and maybe you would animate it and a car passes by. Something like that. So again, it's all about telling a story. It's all about enhancing something. And if I was lighting something like this, you know, first off, I'm like, okay, so now we're running into another problem. The problem we're running into is separation. And that's kind of what thing I want to talk to next is we need to separate him from the background. We need to give him like a nice silhouette. And we talked about using the spotlight. And there we go. So now we're using like a spotlight. We're highlighting the outside of him and we're giving some separation so we can see that there is a person there. 
Um, there's also some cool things we can do with um, making people silhouetted. So if we took this guy, and maybe we find out that um, he's not alone in this shot. There's someone behind him. And maybe we're going to turn back on some of these practicals. And we're going to move. We're just going to do a little bit of yeah, storytelling right here. Let's move this lamp right there. Are there two lamps? So many lamps. OK, so now what we can do is we could take the point light right there. Oh, did I delete the base of the lamp? That's what I did. Oh, no, I didn't. Sorry, guys. Amateur hour happening here. OK, so we have a lamp right there. Let me grab that point light again, move it behind. Let's get back. I should have set up the shot so you could see it, but a little bit better. And I'm going to turn off this light, and we'll turn off the TV. Wow, where's the TV? Oh, there it is. And that point light's a little too bright. Yeah, now we're just slowly creating this mood and we're telling a story. You know, this guy's walking in an apartment, thinks he's alone, and you're now seeing another figure silhouetted. So it's just these little techniques to create separation, to tell your story. Okay, so that's gobos. Another cool thing you can do with gobos is um, how many of you like to render caustics? Okay. This guy likes rendering caustics. <laughs> caustics can be expensive. They can take a long time, and especially if you have like an underwater scene. Well, we can use um, caustics or an image of caustics. If you let's say you animated some noise in um, After Effects and it had some chromatic aberration and it's like moving, you can export that out as like an image sequence, and you could bring it in and make it look like you're underwater by attaching it to a light. So I was going to show you that as well. Um, I think we're in the effects. Let me go in there. OK, it's not in the effects. All right, we'll go into here and do it in here. So yeah, what we can do, and then turn off the clouds. Let me delete this other guy. We don't want him here anymore. So what we can do is we can assign, so we have a sunlight, and we can just create another area light. So I have a nice area light. Let's rotate it down and go up. And we can add a texture into this. So let's come in here. Let me make sure. Uh, where is... Caustics, so I have this image of caustics, and there you go. So this is just a super quick way of creating fake underwater effects without having to create like an actual mesh with refractions, shining a light through. You can quickly do it just by using a area light and some gobos creating the illusion, and that's all you're doing. And there's just faster ways of doing things and things that can save you massive render times. This one's not animated, but you could see that something like this could totally work. And maybe let's play around with the RS environment light, and we would come into the sun and sky. Let's turn off the contributions. Let's see, where is it? Sun and sky. Oh, contribution. There it is. So we have the contribution off on the sun. And then we can come into the area light. And you can turn this up further than just the base baseline. So it is working. And there are, you can see those little beams of light. So just by increasing 
going above the normal one, you're able to create kind of the like volumetric caustic lights coming through the water. So that's another really cool tip. Another time saver or a thing um, that can be really difficult is sometimes if you have like a room and you need to create um, like bounce light, we can do this all in a fake way. And let me find that. So we can go into this room. Let me turn off this natural one. Turn on the room. Okay. Let's look at this. Where's our room? All right, so we've all been in this kind of situation. Um, you, you know, you want that mood of like the sun coming in and um, you start running into the problem of, oh no, it's not illuminating the room as much as I would like it to. Well, there is a beautiful way to fake the secondary bounce and the fake light is adding an area light on the ground. <laughs> Let me turn off the volume contribution. So. If you're having problem with, yes, getting that secondary bounce, simply add an area light on the ground and you can just turn it up right here. So I added the area light on the ground and it's giving us that illusion. Again, the, the, the fake secondary bounce to fill in the room. We do have portal lights and we're not gonna get that today, which is a light that's put by the window that looks at the HDR and anyway. But this is just, again, another technique to help you guys save a lot more time on render times create the fake illusion of secondary bounces and things like that. Yeah, simply add an area light on the ground where the light's hitting from the sun. And if you don't want to use the sun, that's okay too. You can use a spotlight. And there you go. And I'm going to show you guys an example from some films of where they use fake light. So this shot right here, none of that sun coming into the window is real. That is 100% fake huge HDMI light outside going through the window. They probably shot it through some gobos or it's just shooting the window, creating that texture. And the other thing I want to talk about is uh, the separation really quick. So er, complementing our composition. So in this shot, some, there's some cool things that they do when they're lighting big feature films like this. And I want to show you this little diagram next to show why this is, why does this look so good? And here's this little diagram. And again, thanks to Chris Bjorn again for, show, um, for sharing all this information. So if you look at the subject, you'll see his face is illuminated and they have one side that's dark. But what they did to create the separation is they lit the background on the side of the dark side of his face. Because if this side right here was dark, his, the dark side of his face would completely disappear into the background. But because they lit the background where his dark side is, it gave us that nice separation. And then they had the shadow side on the side where his face was lit. So we can do that in cinema as well. Same type of stuff. So let's go back in here. I'll go back to the presentation if you want to take a picture of it. Um, so let's come in here and let's just go back to the studio lights. Oop. And we're gonna turn off our environments and let's do that. Sorry, I'm just gonna reset this. Make this light bigger. Turn off spread. Okay, so first let me just get this comp in the right composition. Again, you'd wanna set your camera first. I would always suggest when you're doing this, like set your camera up so it's in the right position. So I'm gonna um, make sure that this stays on that camera and let's see if I can just get out of this view. And then what we're gonna do is start directing this light. So I saw some behind the photos of this and yeah, they had a giant soft light. So let's first create that nice uh, contrast across the face. So something like that. And then, and I'm gonna do a little bit more extreme just to, for the example. So you can see that on the dark side of his face, um, it's starting to disappear into the background and you know, we're on that, on that side. And, and if we don't want that, and we want to create a little bit more separation between him and the background. Um, we're lucky where we can just do these nice little point lights, but you could use a spotlight, you could use whatever, and you could simply just kind of illuminate a little bit more on that light behind him. So now you're, there's, you're adding more light to the dark side of his face, and then you could darken the light side of his face. Again, this is creating that separation between him and the background. 
or you could use a spotlight, like we have a spotlight out right now hitting his shoulders. So yeah, if I turn off the spotlight now, so, so he disappears, you add one light, bam, you're getting a little bit more separation, hair light, backlight, oh, even more separation, we're seeing a silhouette, we're creating that depth. And then of course you could use the spotlights to maybe enhance the uh, where he is. Maybe there's a window. I don't know why this is not rotating or whatever. Something like that. Cutting in through the side. So yeah, you can use things to enhance that. So let's go back to this, to this image. So yeah, you can see they use the light background, the dark background. They also use volume, volumetrics. So volumetrics is another way to create separation. It's just by adding that volumetric and making it isolated to the background. Um, I wanted to look at, we're going to watch this clip. So, and we're going to kind of talk about each of these scenes. Even right here before I started, look right here. They did it right here. I don't even know where this light is coming from. <laughs> like, they have a random light right there, but it's creating a separation between him and the background. So watch the sequence and you'll kind of see. Notice where the lights are positioned. There's a random light right there. The motivation is from the window. He has a nice backlight. He also kind of has a backlight. We don't know where that's coming from. <laughs> You can see right there, this, they have this nice light on this side. They were trying to illuminate. They could have probably illuminated him right there because his face is disappearing a little bit into the back. But maybe his hand, yeah, separation between background and foreground. This shot in particular, you can see. I, I don't know where that light's coming from. And you'll see he has this nice top light. There's a window coming in, and they have a top light. They add a little light on the globe. And you'll start noticing in films that the lighting is not as... It's, it doesn't have... As, it's, it's, it has continuity. It flows through the mood, and that flows through. But the consistencies you'll find is all over the place. And I have one more example to show you of that happening. So this is really interesting. Pay attention to the backlight as this sequence plays through. Backlit, the sun behind him, she's dark. Now he's backlit, now she's backlit. And he's, now there's like, he has, he's dark on this side, now he's backlit again. And as the camera changes again, oh, now the sun's behind him again. Now the, now the backlight's on the dog, now the backlight's on him. So there's really, I used to think that they would be like, set up the lights and they would shoot a sequence. And like, they would just shoot within that sequence. In reality, they're constantly moving the lights to create that separation, that depth. And now she has a soft on this side. Like you'll, you'll now his soft is on her side. So it's just very interesting and not as consistent as you would think it would be. There's a lot of, it's really at the end of the day, just creating the depth, the focus telling the story, enhancing the mood, like to have a nice warm light. And this also talks about color. He's wearing a very blue or teal colored jacket to complement the warm sun. Bizarre. And that's where you come in. That's a whole other subject just talking like about color face. theory. But beautiful. It looks beautiful. We're all happy with it. And when you're watching a the movie theater, you don't really care and you don't really notice that much. <laughs> so again, here's that other example, seeing where the shadows are, where he's lit, shadow, lit, shadow, lit, sh you know, it's, and that's creating contrast and it's, it's, it looks beautiful. Okay, five minutes, <laughs> okay. So yeah, again, does lighting have to have continuity? It's like, well, it needs to be consistent tone. So here's an example, establishing shot, beautiful. You see the establishing, you know where you are. The mood flows through, but in this example as well, you're gonna see the lights are constantly changing. Everyone's backlit. Everyone has a nice soft light on them, and it's okay. And again, that was that other example. Here's now you can see it from a kind of a wide perspective. Look how everyone's beautifully backlit. So, to me, it kind of just comes down to the simple things: make it look good, <laughs> using lights, complement the story, and draw the viewer's eye. That's what we want to do. So, in your guys' projects, really just use that to enhance the products. Use that if you're telling a story. Use it to if you have a moment that's happening. Use lights to enhance those moments. Anyway, that's what my uh, talk is about, is lighting.